Hello everyone, it's Anthony Bandiar here, attorney and senior legal instructor for political law enforcement training. Bring to the roadside chat. This question comes from an officer in Washoe County, Nevada, and basically has to do with Michigan versus Long. Michigan versus Long is that protect the sweep doctrine case. The officer says, I'm hoping you can shed some light on Michigan versus Long. I understand that with the articulable facts, a frisk of the vehicle may be deemed reasonable by the Supreme Court. However, I'm having trouble understanding if the conviction for marijuana was upheld and was that search deemed appropriate? Okay, so real quick, Michigan versus Long is a 1983 case that dealt with a guy who basically crashed in a ditch in Michigan and he was intoxicated. There was two officers on scene. They're trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, Mr. Long's door was kind of open a little bit and he you could see him going back to, uh, towards the car and the cops kind of grabbed him. They saw that there was a knife in the map pocket of the driver's door. Believing that there could be more weapons in that vehicle, the officers then uh, kind of did a protective sweep to secure those weapons so this drunk guy doesn't stab him with a knife or have a gun. They opened up the center console. In there was marijuana. Uh, Long was ultimately um, charged with marijuana offenses. And the Supreme Court of Michigan threw out the charge, okay? They said that because Essentially, because this search of the vehicle was beyond their their person, you know, Terry versus Ohio kind of pat downs and so forth, because it really wasn't in line with, you know, existing precedent that this was an unlawful search under the Fourth Amendment. And therefore, they suppressed the evidence. It went to the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court disagreed. They said essentially that a police can conduct a Terry type search of the passenger compartment of the vehicle during a lawful investigatory stop, if the officer possesses a reasonable belief based on specific and articulable facts that the suspect is dangerous and may gain immediate control of weapons. Well, the knife was there. They, they believe that he was maybe gonna go for the knife and so forth. He's also intoxicated. He crashed, he's not using good judgment. And you know, this is these are specific facts that they're danger, that there could be a danger. Now, as far as what happened to Mr. Long, we don't quite know because what happened was because the Michigan Supreme Court overturned his conviction and the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the, the Michigan Supreme Court, that case had to go back to, you know, Michigan to get resolved in line with the Supreme Court's ruling. Very often when they say remanded, right, for, uh, for you know, further with, with, uh, proceedings not inconsistent with this opinion and so forth, what happens is the cases kind of like just disappear, right? Um, probably what happened to Long was the case just disappeared. It just, you know, it's not that, it wasn't that major of a case to really keep fighting. Um, he, he probably was going to win anyway, right? The Supreme Court kind of made it clear that it seemed like the law was in favor of the police officers. So that's what likely happened to Long, but we don't know. If it did go to trial again, with what we know about what happened in Long's case, would this be a conviction? Yes. So, but sometimes we just don't find out. Anyway, that's what happened there. Um, kind of a quick conversation. If you have more uh, for me that you want me to answer, please let me know. If you like what we're doing here, please hit subscribe, like, so forth, share with your friends. Until next time, my friends, you stay safe.